Hey everybody, welcome back to Rust Belt Diecast Customs. And today we're gonna to do a video that gotten a request for. Um, people wanna know how I take apart Matchbox and Hot Wheels cars and put them back together. So I'm gonna show you my way. I'll show you a couple alternatives as well because you know there's many ways to skin a cat. So here's what you need, obviously a car. And also you're gonna need some kind of a lubricant. I use this uh, air tool oil just cause I have a lot of it. You'll need a larger drill bit there, and then a smaller drill bit that came with the die set. This is the die that you're gonna need. It's a 256 tap, and then this is the handle for it. Um, a couple of 256 screws. These ones happen to be an eighth inch long, and they come in a little bag from eBay. And of course, a screwdriver to put them in. Our first step, of course, is going to be to take the vehicle apart. So here's the two rivets on the bottom. Most cars have two rivets. Some have one and then like a little lip on the end to tuck the, the base into the body. But um, the majority of them from Hot Wheels and Matchbox have two rivets on them. So we start with our drill bit. This is the drill bit that came with the, the tap set, the die set. Um, and I just put a little piece of tape on there just so I know which bit it is. Um, this is just, you can use any small bit though if you don't plan on putting it back together with screws. So first things first, what we gotta do is line it up with the hole there, the little dot in the middle of the, of the rivet, and then just slowly drill it out. And along the process, you can pull it out and you can actually see how deep that is. What I like to do when I'm using the actual tap bit is go a little bit deeper because I'll do a, it'll be a pilot hole then for when I drill out for the screw. So I'm just gonna go a little bit further with this one. You do wanna be careful not to go too deep because you can crack the post that the rivet is in and you can also go through the side of the post, which both of those are bad things and you'll have to use something else to do that, to put it back together. So here is the other one. Oh, I can't get the focus, there we go. A big thing when you're doing this is to try to avoid pushing on the wheels or the, the glass. I know it's not real glass, but you know what I mean? Um, because you will put too much pressure on them. They're not meant to have a ton of pressure on them. So I just need a little bit more. Perfect. All right. So now that the smaller bit has done its job, we're gonna move on to a larger bit. Um, this one has a, very important to have a shallow blade on it um, as opposed to a point because the point will actually dig into the hole that you just cut. You don't want that to happen. You just want to take off the head of the rivet. So you can see how this bit is just about the same size as the head of the rivet. You want to make sure this is perfectly lined up straight square. And you're going to go real slow with this one. And you see how it's working there? Taking the head off the rivet. And what's nice about this bit too is not only is it shallow, but it's a little dull. So it doesn't cut as aggressively. So that should, that should do it there. You can see the head of the rivet is gone and we've actually touched a little bit on the edges. It'll still be a little challenging to pull it off, but it will be good to go. Now we'll do the other one here, straight on. So you can see how some of these work where it slides like that. That's not a problem at all. Happy accidents. You just cut in a little bit on an angle to get out the remainder of the rivet there. Now that we have the rivets drilled out, the heads drilled off of them, our next step is gonna be to pry them out. And um, I forgot to mention, you do need something like this. You can use 
anything really, but obviously a flathead screwdriver works the best because it's an actual tool meant for things like this. Um, some of these cars will actually, um, like newer Hot Wheels especially, they'll have a space where the, the base comes down below the casting itself. These are so much easier to take apart or they'll have like a bumper coming over and you can pry on the bumper and pull it down just with your hand. But for these ones where they're pretty flush, um, you really gotta find a little spot like this to dig in. And sometimes they're a little bit of a pain. I'm gonna have to drill that out a little further. That should do her. So that's what you gotta do sometimes, is drill those out a little bit further. And then, um, just so that we don't hit the wheels, and try to get in closer to the front end here. And, let's see, come on. Looks like she's hanging up a little bit, and that's what happens sometimes. Same as the back, we just gotta hit it again, just a little bit on that edge. Just to pop that off, because it's just a little tiny bit of metal that's, that's hanging on there. It looks like there might be a lip on this one too. So you don't want to pry against the wheels. I'm glad I did this one because you can see what happens when it kind of doesn't work right. The rivet is free. Looks like there's something else. Oh, there we go. So there was a little lip on the edge that was inside. So there you go, and that is your drilled out posts. And I'm kind of glad that one didn't go perfectly. So now you can get to your interior. That's a really cool interior. Unfortunately, I'm filling this thing with weight for racing, so I'm not gonna use the interior. And then your glass just pops out like that. And then we are disassembled. On some of these posts, you'll need to file it down a little bit so you can see how this one has a bit around it like that, that we can actually go ahead and clean up a little bit. Um, I just do that because it's, it makes it a lot easier when you're putting the screws in later because it won't catch. And I think that might be why this one was actually hanging up. So you can see that. So I'm just gonna take a little file here and just knock that down. It's relatively soft metal, not difficult to file at all. Um, You can just see how that that lip is is gone now on the edge so that'd be a lot easier to get the thing apart now so now we want to take our bit that we were using before that came with the tap and we you can see we have holes there already from when we drilled through so what i was saying about the pilot hole that's what that is so you just line it up on your pilot hole And the screws are eighth inch long. I like to go just a little bit further, um, maybe even twice that, quarter inch, something like that. You wanna pull, out every, pull the bit out every now and then, reset it. Cause we don't want too much heat in there. It might break the actual post. So that is the hole drilled out on the sides and we're good to go now to tap. Next step is to use our lubricant um, and again I use this air tool oil but there's a ton of things that you could use for this. Um, pretty much any kind of tool or dye oil works. I would stay away from like a spray lubricant like WD-40 or something like that just because it's not gonna hold up to the heat of um, tapping the, the holes. So you just want a little dot. And that's the other reason why I like using this tool oil is because it's thicker. And even though this is a nice big bottle, you can still get a small dot out of it. So now our tap comes in. And again, it's two parts. 
is the handle, this is the tap itself, and it just fits in there like a little T. And one more time, this is the tap that I'm using, it's from Drill America, you can get them online, you can find them in hardware stores, but it's a 256 tap and that's because we're using 256 size screws. So you want to match up your tap with your screws that you're using. Uh, these are eighth inch long again, these tend to be the ones that work the best for these vehicles and this size of a post. So you want to line it up in there and make sure it's straight and then just start turning slowly to start until you can feel it catch. And like I said, the metal's relatively soft so it doesn't take much pressure to get through it. Now you don't want to bottom out the tap. Once it stops, leave it unscrew so unscrew it completely if you bottom it out it actually will push the threads down and you don't want that that's bad uh, so you can see now the threads inside that hole and you spin it around do the other side and you can see how quick this is actually it's it's pretty simple process just line those up turn to get it to catch and there we go we are in business and then we're gonna let it, let it stop. Line her back out. And there it is, you can see the threads in there. Here are the screws we're using, and one more time, they're 256 size, eighth inch long. And you're gonna need this little, little, little screwdriver to work with them. And of course your base. So if you're reassembling the entire operation here, you can push your glass back in, put your body back in, and then here's the base. Now I wanna show you on the base where we overcut on the side here. If you see that lip below, that's the important one to lock in the screws. So it's really not a big deal that we went over on that. So now you see, now that I had that lip gone, it just, it can pop in, pop out, no problem. So you wanna make sure you file down those posts when you have that kind of an issue. So now we're gonna put our screw on our little, little bitty screwdriver, get to the hole. Screw it until it stops. Get the other one here. Oops. Screw it until it stops. And there we go. Boom. Ready to go again. So now you can take that and you can take it apart, customize it, paint the interior, do whatever you want to do, add some weights if you're racing, and you can do anything with it now. And then if you get bored of the way it looks, flip it over, unscrew it, take it apart, do it again. So that's my method. Um, alternatively, if you didn't want to use the screws, you can drill out the rivets and then use something like this. This is JB Quick. Um, it's just a fast setting version of JB Weld, um, which is just a metal and a hardener. Or you can use super glue. I prefer the gel for this particular process, um, but this doesn't work as well. You can also use like a two part epoxy. Pretty much anything that's sticky and long lasting will work to hold these together. There you go. Thank you so much for watching Rust Belt Diecast Customs. Please like, uh, subscribe, comment. I love talking with you guys about this stuff. That's where these suggestions come from. If you have suggestions for, for, for future videos, if there's something you wanna see, let me know. So we will see you next time on Rust Belt Diecast Customs.